Hello, I'm Rob Hirschfeld, CEO and co-founder of RackN. And this is a sneak peek into RackN Digital Rebar Interactive Labs, a feature that we built for the 4.10 release that really opens up uh, the capabilities of Digital Rebar to every user by giving concrete, specific, hands-on training right into the UX. Uh, and this feature is groundbreaking because it really makes infrastructure as code more accessible to everyone. Uh, in this case, the effort was led by our intern, Xander Franks. Uh, he did a marvelous job, and it will be his voice you hear leading us through the labs and our other UX engineer, Isaac Hirschfeld. So uh, enjoy. This is a really powerful feature, and I know you will get a lot out of seeing it. Welcome to the tour of our new labs feature. Today, we're going to talk about what labs are, where labs are, and how labs are created. We're going to start off with Xander showing us what labs are. Before we can talk about what labs are, we're going to show you how to find them from within the RackN portal. The new portal homepage features our first lab, Install Digital Rebar, where users can follow along without being signed into Digital Rebar. After finishing these steps, a connect button is provided for redirecting to the login page. Once you're logged in, you can navigate to the new labs view by clicking the green button with the flask icon on the top right of the nav next to your user's name. Labs are interactive step-by-step -step trainings aimed at covering different aspects of Digital Rebar. They can be popped out and will follow you around the portal as you run through the steps. Some labs may provide videos, which you can similarly pop out and follow along with. Before we dive into the lab view, I'd like to mention that labs are also available at docs.rackend.io. The new lab view is a tree of labs. Labs further up in the tree are dependencies of labs beneath them. For example, Lab 1001 Leveraging Labs is dependent on Lab 1000 Install Digital Rebar. This means that you are intended to complete Lab 1000 before Lab 1001. We'll start by clicking into Lab 1000, Install Digital Rebar, which is assumed to be completed since we are now in our endpoint. The view that is now visible is referred to as the Lab Viewer. It displays all aspects of the lab from its objective, description, tags, concepts, steps, and video if one is provided. We'll mark this lab as complete by clicking the Mark Complete button from the top right. The state of a lab's completeness is only relevant to the browser in which it was set. This means that any labs you mark complete will not persist between other browsers or users. Now we'll click into Lab 1001, Leveraging Labs. This lab covers various features of the labs and how to leverage them. Links in the lab viewer are smart and will open a pop-up when navigating from within the portal at that step. This modal acts as a slideshow for the steps of the lab. It will persist when you navigate to different views in the portal or when you refresh your browser, until you close the modal. We can navigate back to the labs viewer by clicking the flask icon from the top right of the modal. It is also accessible by clicking the blue pin icons from within the lab viewer. Some lab steps offer choices that provide different steps based on your decision. Your decision is remembered for the duration of the lab, so multiple tab groups with the same tabs, such as operating system, are remembered. Now we'll switch the modal into list view by clicking the list icon from the top right. This transforms the modal into the same step layout from the viewer. Steps can be popped out just as they can from the viewer. We'll switch back to the guided mode by clicking one of the pins. Now we'll skip the step to the end of the lab as our content is over. The final page of the modal allows you to mark the lab as complete and view other suggested labs. With our modal open from the suggested labs, we'll select a lab with a video such as Lab 1010, Managing Groups of Machines Using Clusters. We can play the video by popping it out with the button and playing it from the pop-out. This video will also follow you around as you navigate the portal. Now that we've taken a look at how to use the labs from within the portal, let's follow along with Isaac, who will explain how to add and remove labs from the portal, as well as how to create and edit labs externally. Creating and editing labs is a streamlined process. All of the labs Rackn built are found in our labs repo on GitLab at gitlab.com slash rackn slash labs. The labs repo provides a variety of useful resources for building custom labs, such as a style guide, a JSON schema for validating labs, developer tools for building labs, Visual Studio Code settings, and instructions for getting labs into the portal. One of the main tools used for developing labs is the static server, which is via tools slash serve sh. For this demo, I'm going to change the title of Lab 1000. Before you link this server from the portal, be sure to accept the TLS certificate when using this tool or it will not load in the portal. Now we'll head back to the portal to add this custom lab bundle. We'll start by navigating to the Profiles view and clicking on the Global button in the table header. Once the global profile is open, we'll click the Add Param button and search for the lab underscore URLs param. The default value will be the link of the official Rackin Labs. 
If we set this to an empty array, labs will be disabled and the labs navigation button will be removed. To add another bundle of labs, we simply paste in the link to the JSON file. Once we save this param, we can navigate back to the labs view to see our changes. We can see the lab tree has been updated with the changes I made. Thanks for following along with our tour. We hope you enjoyed this new feature. Check it out yourself at portal.racken.io.